Good stuff. Let's talk about technology. Sorry, just a second. Mmm. Yummy. This jar of pickles is an extraordinary technology. I know, I know, you're like, what are you talking about? It's just a jar of pickles. Well, it's not just a jar of pickles. First of all, it's an extraordinary technique of preserving food. Second of all, the very fact of the glass jar, this containment technology, is an extraordinary t achievement. There's hundreds, maybe thousands of years of glass craft go into making an industrially produced jar. And beyond that, just that the jar of pickles arrives to me is an extraordinary accomplishment of the technologies of communication, of roads and telephones and emails, letters. So remember, a, a jar of pickles, even a jar of pickles, is a vast network of technologies. Look around you, think about all of the things in your life. All of these are extraordinary networks of technologies. So let's think about this as we get into Shangri-La. This is the anime about a future world overrun by technology and vastly changed by technology and the solutions to the problems are considered to be technological solutions. So what is technology? Well, the word technology comes from the Greek technikos or techne, which means art. In English, the noun can first be found in the 19th century, right around the real acceleration of the industrial explosion, interestingly. I like to think of techne and technology in terms of art, craft, technique, technology. So it's a practical relation. It's an action, a doing or a making that's like building a hut or cooking a meal. So technologies are practical relations that people have practiced, they've tried them out over and over and over, and they've honed them and refined them, rehearsing them, until they start to develop tools and artifacts that go with those practices. So you could say that technologies start out as practical relations that become concrete or solid in made objects, in artifacts. They become techniques. Pickling is a great example. It's a kind of technology of homemaking, of habitat. Fire is often associated with technology because it's the cooking and the meeting around the hearth. The hearth is the center of the kind of constructed home and cooking is kind of the beginning of an elaboration that makes us, you know, more than just another ape. Often fire is associated with the mythological origins of technology. Look at Prometheus, Coyote, Raven, Loki, Lucifer. All of these deities deal in fire and craftiness. Now craftiness is, yes, it's being clever, but it's also clever at making things. Hephaestus, the Greek god of technology, is a blacksmith forging in a fiery volcano. Look at the kitchen of the Hojos. Making home. Technologies are about making home. This is a room full of relational practices, cooking, preserving, and storing food. Food techniques have produced many, many technologies. In many ways, the foundations of industrial chemistry, of even uh, thermo like thermodynamics, liquid thermodynamics, come out of cooking practices and cooking instruments. The earliest scientific instruments were using cooking instruments. Another way to think about technologies outside the home are prosthetic extensions. So these are articulating and extending the human capacities. For example, this jet boat. It's like another version of swimming or walking, but one that makes it so you can walk or swim faster. It's changing the relationship with the environment. And in the process, it changes the environment. Like what, what is there and what's possible to do with it? Uh, of course, ironically, the ancestor of the jet boat, the automobile, has transformed the atmosphere and the ocean in the world of Shangri-La. Now this is a conceptually a little bit further of a reach, but I think you're going to get it. Clocks 
and universal measurements like inches and meters, these are special kinds of technologies. These are technologies that perform conceptual abstraction. Or another way to think about it is conceptual containment, like the pickles, that contains time and space so that they're predictable, so that they ferment the same each time. And this is what's allowed a global technicity, a kind of global momentum of technology and synchronicity to emerge, sort of the conceptual containment for short-term predictable results. I mean, you could not do global trade without synchronized clocks. We could not peacefully trade without agreeing about the measurements. I mean, before even talking about verifying scientific results, right? This is another technology, these environmental suits that we see in Shangri-La. I like to think that equipment is another important word to think about technology. Is it equipped to deal with the world. So these suits allow the characters to extend their bodily capacity out of the safe zone, out of the city, and into the inhab inhabitable jungle. Of course, they only need these because technology has transformed the atmosphere and changed uh, the forest and made it inho inhospitable. So the important thing with technologies is to remember, in one hand, they extend the human, but on the other hand, the consequences can limit, again, what's possible, as we see these days. So returning to the pickles, the suits, I mean, the, in some ways, the suits and the pickles, and what we'll see in the next is the seawall, they're all similar relations. They contain culture and give the conditions for flourishing. So flourishing rather than dying, or even just being unhappy, right? So the seawall, these are the containment walls that are around Domu and Akihabara in Shangri-La. And they're kind of, they're very important because without them, the cities would flood. So on one hand, they're containment, but on the other hand, they're also connecting the city to the outside world. But there's a connection that's most important aspect is also to be a boundary. And it's a really important way to think about technologies that they can be an environmental interface, connecting and separating. Another word that we use to talk about seawalls that's quite popular is infrastructure. And this is the idea that technologies are configured as systems of support and transport. So like roads, bridges, uh, wires, mobile phone towers. And this is kind of the idea that the technologies become embedded and submerged in our lives and they're, they're invisible support networks. So going forward in our next talk, we're going to get into this idea of technicity. And this is the idea that technology has its own mode of existence that's in communication with humans, but it also has its own aspect that's outside of humanists. Technologies have an evolutionary momentum of their own. And it has to do with making relations between humans and the world. And it kind of is important to remember that this is what's shaping our ecological awareness. All right, so read the article. You'll find it on the page. Enjoy it as best you can. It's going to be hard, but push through even if you don't understand everything, okay? And we're going to talk about it in the next talk and we'll try to make sense of some of the more difficult concepts. All right, I'll see you then.